Hey, how's it going, fifth grade? So today, Tuesday, June 16th, we are going to work on page 130 and 131. And we're also just going to look at the concept of equivalent ratios. So uh, after that, we're going to play a game just to practice and do a little bit of review. So let's jump right in. Last time we worked on page 129 um, and 128, just to understand the concept of ratio. It's a concept that's relatively simple because basically all you have to do is count, right? Um, if we count, for example, the problems from last time, we count the circles and the triangles, we're going to come up with the exact number, um, which we can later on compare, okay? We did the same thing on page 128 with tables and chairs, triangles and squares, as well as chilies, tomatoes, and uh, the length of ribbon. So let's actually jump into page 131 and do the same thing. What we're doing is we are comparing now on page 130 the mass of a, what is that called, a box. Okay, on page 130 it's box A and box B. One of the masses is 2 kilograms and one of the masses is 5 kilograms. So let's compare those two masses. Um, if we look at the mass of the first one, this is box A, in comparison to box B, we can tell that box B is a whole lot bigger, right? Box A is going to be 2 kilograms, and box B is going to be 5, so our ratio is just 2 to 5. Letter B says the ratio of the mass of box B to the mass of box A. Well, it's just the opposite, right? We're just going to put the mass of box B first, which is 5 and the mass of box A, which is 2. Okay, if you can't see it, I'll write that right here as well. And the third one, we're going to have to find the total in comparison to one of the boxes, right? So box A is going to come first. We already know that that is 2 kilograms. We don't need the label in this case. And the total is just going to be 2 plus 5, which equals 7. So our ratio is 2 to 7. All right, that was pretty simple. Let's go into another problem. I am going to go to the next problem on page 130, and this time instead of mass, we have volume. All right, remember that volume is the amount of liquid that takes up space. Okay, so we have those two examples, and the first one says the ratio of the volume of water of container A to the volume of water in container B is. Well, first of all, we have to figure out how many milliliters. If you look at where the water line ends inside of this beaker, it shows us that it has 500 milliliters inside of the beaker okay, of water. And letter B, let me just move this out of the way, has a little bit more, right? What do you see right there? 700 milliliters of liquid. You can see that letter B, container B, holds a little bit more. So what we do is we have a comparison of 700 to 500 if we're looking at A versus B, right? Now, one thing that's very important to remember is we need to simplify these problems in order to find the, the most simple ratio po possible, right? We can divide both of them by 100 to try to figure that out, right? So let's do that. Let's divide 700 by 100. And let's divide 500 by 100 as well. If we do that, we can take away both of the zeros on both the numbers, and our new ratio is 7 to 5, right? Oops, let me write that over again, because it's actually 7 to 5, right? Letter A, container A has 5 as a ratio, and letter B has 7. So if we're looking at that, we're going to write this ratio as 5 to 7. And letter B says the ratio of the volume of water of container B to the volume of water in container A is just the opposite, just like our previous problem, 7 to 5. And then the last problem that we have wants us to um, compare the total once more. Okay, let me put that in a different color so you can see it. We have container B, which again is 7. So we're going to put 7 as our first part of the ratio, and the total would just be 5 plus 7, which equals 12. 
So our ratio is 7 to 12. Okay, good. So those are pretty simple. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at equivalent ratios. Equivalent ratios are just a fancy word of saying that the ratios are the same. They equal the same thing. Now, in class, uh, if you were in class, uh, you'll notice that we took a look at um, this, this video that I had made last time, okay, um, which is from uh, the website scaleofuniverse.com. Okay, it shows the different scale of lots of different things in our universe. For, for example, the hummingbird to scale with the shrew. Okay, they're the same um, relative scale size, right? We can even look at the scale of a Tyrannosaurus rex versus an elephant, all right? That's the same concept of what we're going to be doing on um, the next couple of pages. We're going to be looking at equivalent ratios and fractions, okay, a little bit later on. If we look at, for example, the ratio of boys to girls, we can say that the ratio is 3 to 5. But we can also say that a equivalent ratio is 6 to 10. We're just multiplying by a factor of 2, correct? And then we go up one more and we're multiplying by a factor of 3. We can say that that same ratio, 3 to 5, is equivalent to 9 to 15. Okay, On the bottom you see that in fraction form. These ratios are pretty easy to understand as long as we know if we are either multiplying or dividing. Okay, so we'll get into a couple of examples with that uh, right here. For example, 2 to 1 is equivalent to 4 to 2, which is equivalent to 6 to 3, right? They're all the same type of ratios. It just kind of depends, like I said on the bottom, that if we are um, multiplying or dividing. Okay, so you can see it on the bottom, for example, this example. 3 to 4, that ratio is equivalent to 5 to 20 because we are multiplying each side by 5. But in this other example, 12 to 8 is equivalent to 6 to 4 because we are dividing the numbers to make it smaller, right? To simplify, all right? So those are just a couple of examples of equivalent ratios. I wonder if we can find equivalent ratios in this one example right here. So let's start with the first one, 1 to 5. Well, if we take 1 to 5 and we multiply both of them by 2, for example, multiply both sides by 2, that would be 2 to 10. So this is an equivalent ratio. 2 to 10 is equivalent to 1 to 5. Let's do a different color. Uh, let's try to go up again. Let's see, 4, oops, 4 to 7. What equivalent ratio would that be? Can you try to help me out with that one? Can we multiply 4 and 7 by the same number? Well, 4 times 3 is 12, but 7 times 3 is not 32, so that's not equivalent. Um, let's try another one. 4 times 10 is 40, but 7 times 10 is not 48, so that's not equivalent. Uh, let's try another one. 4 times 3 is 12, and 7 times 3 is 21, so that's an equivalent ratio. You see, 21, I'm sorry, 12 to 21 is equivalent to 4 to 7. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, and I'd like you to try the next couple, okay, on your own. All right, so hopefully you did a couple of those on your own. We're not going to do the rest of them here in this video. This is just a little bit of a practice because we actually have a couple of practice problems that we're going to do in our book. Okay, so let me show you those practice problems right now. Um, we are going to go to page 131. Okay, you'll see a couple more examples right here if you want to look at them, um, but I don't think we really need to. Page 131 has a problem, the ratio 15 to 9. Now, what do we need to do to make this ratio smaller? Well, we need to divide, just like it says inside of our book. We're going to divide 9 and 15 by the same number. In your book, it shows that we're dividing by 3 on both sides. So let's divide both of those by the same number. 15 divided by 3 equals 5, and 9 divided by 3 equals 3. So our equivalent ratio is 15 ninths equals 5 thirds. 
You'll notice that in your book, what they did is they just took uh, an, uh, a whole, right, 15 as a whole, so 15 over 15, for example, and they split it into five different sections. So say, for example, this was 15, okay? But if we wanted to simplify this, we could split this into five different sections, all right? Five plus five plus five plus five plus five. Okay, same goes with 9, for example. We could have um, a 9 represented as a whole, and then we can split that 9 into sections of 3. Let me show you that right here on the screen. We can split this into sections of 3, right? 3 plus 3 plus 3, all right? So that's why our fraction, I'm sorry, our ratio, 15 to 9 is the same as 5 to 3, okay? Let's do that last problem on page 31 on the first part. Let me switch this just to black just so we can see it a little bit better. With 12 to 4, are we going to be dividing or multiplying? Well, that depends. Um, if we want to get a smaller ratio, we can divide. So let's actually divide both of those by the same number. What least common... Um, multiple do they have both 12 and 4? I'm sorry, what least common factor? We're trying to find the, the um, no, greatest common factor. Okay, sorry about that. Sometimes I get them confused as well. We're going to try to find the greatest common factor to divide both sides, right? Just like we did in the first problem. Well, I know that 12 and 4 both have 4 as a factor. Both of them have four as their greatest common factor. It's the greatest because you could have picked um, could have picked one, but one is not the greatest. Common because they're both four and they're both factors, right? So twelve divided by four is three, and four divided by four is one, right? So our final ratio is three to one. Remember that any number divided by itself equals one. All right, let's get rid of everything in this screen, and let's go to the next couple of problems. Page 131, again, we're going to try to find the ratio in its simplest form. We're not going to do all these problems because we ran out of time during class, but let's do the first couple, okay? Um, what I'm going to do first is just kind of make a little bit more space uh, for some of these so I can write them. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, let's figure out the first couple. Um, when we look at six, oh, let me get rid of that box. When we look at six, uh, oops, sorry about that. If we look at six ninths, or, or the ratio six to nine, we can make this ratio a lot smaller, right? We can try to figure it out as um, a, a ratio that's been divided by a couple of the same numbers, all right? Now that I got rid of that text box, I can actually write on the screen a little bit better. So what are we going to divide both sides by? Well, 6 and 9 both have greatest the greatest common factor as 3. So let's divide both sides by 3. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. And 9 divided by 3 equals 3. So 6 to 9 is the same as 2 to 3. Next problem, 12 to 4. How can we simplify this one? Well, we can find the greatest common factor with each one of the numbers, right? Greatest common factor in this case is 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. With the next problem, 6 to 24, it's a very similar concept. We're going to find the greatest common factor with 6 and 24, which is 6 itself, right? 6 divided by 6 is 1. And 24 divided by 6 is 4, 1 to 4. All right, I'd like you to pause the video, and I'd like you to try a couple of these problems. If you'd like to check the problems on the bottom, I'm going to do these two problems after the video has been paused for a little while. So go ahead and pause the video and try these problems on your own.
All right, hopefully you paused the video and you tried those problems on your own. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to check the last two problems. Okay, so I'm going to um, just check those two right here. All right, let me put that. There we go. All right, let's get rid of these two arrows. And let's do that last problem, 20 to 40. Now, what I noticed in class is many students told me that 20 to 40 was the same as 10 to 20, which you are correct. That's true. But what we need to do is we need to simplify it as much as possible. What they did is they just divided 20 by 10, 2 and divided 40 by 2, which is okay. But remember, we need to find the greatest common factor. 2 is a factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. So 20 and 10 are not going to be our parts of our ratio. We can divide both sides by, um, we can try that by 40, I think. Nope, 20. Let's try 20. Divide 20 by 20 and divide 40 by 20. 20 divided by 20 is 1. And 40 divided by 20 is 2. So that's our least um, way to represent this, this ratio. Okay, if you really wanted to do it um, a little bit easier, instead of dividing, you could have just chopped off these two zeros. You were left with 2 to 4, and 2 to 4 is the same as 1 to 2. Okay, if you just divide that again by 2. It would have been two steps, but whatever the same. Um, and let's do that last problem on this page. 30 to 24. What would be our greatest common factor for those two numbers? Hmm. 2? 6? What do you think? I think we're going to go with 6, right? 30 divided by 6 equals 5. And 24 divided by 6 equals 4. So, 30 to 24 is the same as 5 to 4. We're going to continue and finish these problems in our next class. So I'm just going to erase everything on the board and just show you what we had done from last time. We did a Kahoot last time, and we tried to see how well we understood this concept. Uh, many students participated, and it actually went pretty well. So congratulations. Boys and girls, if you want to look at this ratio um, video again that Mr. Joseph made. I would recommend it. I'll put a link inside of the, the notes. Also, just reminding you that the concepts that we've been seeing this year in math are the following. We've already done chapter one, whole numbers, chapter two, multiplication and division, and right now we're doing ratio, chapter six, before we jump back and do chapter three with fractions. Just want to remind you that prodigy and extra math are both um, still usable. We could we could really, um, really benefit from using both of those. I posted a couple of things on Instagram just so that you know that Prodigy, unfortunately, we haven't, haven't had any students that um, have been working on Prodigy uh, this past week. Uh, and we do have a couple of shout outs, especially in fifth grade. So congratulations to Kayleen, Jennifer, and Jimena. All right, boys and girls, we will talk to you guys later. Hopefully you have a good week, and we'll see you on Friday.